Hey, hello, this is another development update number uh, two uh, about the Zelda-like prototype in Construct 3. I was about to say Construct 2, but I'm actually working in Construct 3. Wow! Uh, Construct 2 is a program that I've been using for over 10 years and uh, for the last four to six weeks. Uh, I've been trying my best to get acquainted with Construct 3 it's not a huge hassle. If you know Construct 2, you kind of know what to expect for Construct 2, uh, 3. But some things work a little bit differently. Um, mostly the functions. I'm not going to go into detail. But I've been using Construct 3 to build a prototype that I've showcased in the first video that I uploaded uh, last week. And, um, you know, I've been doing that to learn Construct 3 and also to, uh, you know, uh, do something else for a change. Um, I, I just like prototyping. I like building games and just finding out like what it actually, uh, you know, what it entails to make or to realize a concept and to to make it and you know to learn from that. Um, for the last ten years, I've been working on a main game, so this is also a little bit to you know change it up, uh, do something differently instead of just staring at the same game for ten years. Uh, not recommended. Uh, slightly, for, um, sli maybe a little bit, tiny bit. <laughs> let's let's just get started. In the last video, um, there was just this broad like overview of things that I was actually building and uh, where the project is. In this video, I'm actually gonna set a timer this time. Uh, set a timer last time, but th this one is gonna be shorter. Uh, uh, but my goal is 50 minutes. The t the time is running. Um, See, the purpose of this video is not really to showcase like how everything is built and uh, a tutorial like, ah, oh, if you want to build a uh, Zelda-like game, uh, watch, watch, watch this video as well. Uh, that is not this video at all. Um, it could be like if you see something that I'm uh, showing and you're like, ah, oh, could you maybe explain it a little bit more in detail? Don't hesitate. Just ask in the comments. And, uh, you know, I will try my best to answer that question in the comments uh, or in just a separate or in a uh, in a separate video or in another development update. So the purpose of this video, this one today, is to show the progress that I've been made. Uh, it's maybe good to know that this is not a full time commitment. Uh, you know, uh, this is just a hobby. Uh, so I didn't spend a ton of time on it. Maybe maybe six hours or so, six to six to eight. I I, I don't know. Um, I just try to work on it in the morning um, or in the evening for like an hour or in the weekend. You know, whenever I feel like it. That's the beauty of it. So with that said, let's just get started. Uh, there are two. There are probably two topics that I want to discuss, and uh, maybe some smaller ones. But uh, the two topics is. Uh, maybe one of them is a, a very big change and the other one is more about the interaction with objects so let's just show it um, let's rebuild this game so that everything is running again and I listen up it still looks the same oh no I added another square block <laughs> it still looks the same and I think one of the challenges right now is to keep it looking like this for as long as possible because I am glad that I did and didn't really like work on like all the different kind of features and uh, the graphics, the, the beautiful graphics. Um, so the, 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 the goal or let's just call it another challenge is to work on the foundation. Like what do I have to build first or what is actually necessary or required to, you know, expand this game to actually make it into a game. So what we see over here is the same thing, uh, you know, as I was talking about before uh, in the first video, uh, we do have like simple enemy spawn, uh, like, uh, you know, enemies that get sp spawned into a scene or a screen that we are looking at right now. Uh, they have like very simplistic uh, behavior they just look like can I walk up down left or right 
whatever. We do have, uh, you know, the, the red square is, by the way, the enemy. If you did, if you hadn't guessed yet, the red square is the enemy. Uh, it's kind of nice that he is actually walking over there. I'm kind of curious if he is able to walk down. Yes, they are. Something for later. I have to write it down in my head, but later on paper. Hey, do not forget to, to, to change that. Uh, the other thing that we see here are two items. Uh, those are the blue green squares. And uh, we have like an inventory. Uh, I, I might have skipped uh, the big change actually. Uh, just this is a small introduction. We do have like an inventory. We can select deselect items. Uh, so far I only have like a primary and a secondary slot. And I think that that's going to stay there. Uh, we do have like this gray square over here, which is a switch. And uh, another thing that I was working on this morning, and that's one of those um, uh, blocks that you can push or maybe pull, but I do think it's just going to be something that you push or uh, interact with. And, uh, you know, maybe move it away or move it to a certain spot to actually make something happen. You know, uh, it's an interaction, it's a trigger event. If you want to know more about the trigger events, watch the previous video, because I do think I explained that a little bit more in detail, like what I'm trying to figure out. Although that has changed as well. So my maybe, maybe quick explanation. It's going to be quick because I only have 10 minutes left. So the biggest change actually is uh, right now, um, as you can see here, is that the level design has changed a little bit, or at least the uh, the amount of space that we have to build a level. So, uh, yeah, I do think you see my mouse pointer. Um, last in the last video, I was talking about. Well, I I'm not sure what to do about the interface. Like, uh, is it just going to be an overlay on the whole level, or do I actually reserve some space for the inventory? There were some downsides about placing the, uh, let's just say, the sword icon over here to place it over here. Like, um, that you can always see, like, okay, uh, I have this equipped over here, and that the, that is in the UI. It could either be on the left or the right. Uh, the downside is that if it's here, that uh, it's something that you really have to take into consideration when actually making the design of a screen. Because if something would, uh, you know, something is uh, important is over here uh, and it is overlapping with the sword icon, that's not good. So you can see the other thing that's below it. That's not good. That is not going to work at all. Um, so uh, quickly in a previous video, I was already like, no, nah, we just have to build the traditional is a traditional or a similar UI as the first Zelda. We, uh, you know, we, just a black bar above. And I'm glad I did because uh, it didn't take that much time to actually adjust it. But I was thinking, well, that actually means that every level has to be adjusted. Every screen has to be adjusted. And um, uh, one of the bigger impacts was actually that normally you know, there's a tell map. This is a tell map over here, and this is square zero zero. So when loading something in in this game, uh, it's all based on JSON files, and uh, I say like, okay, here's an overlay. Uh, I want a enemy to spawn at 15 on the X. Uh, you know, uh, here is the X, the 15, and also maybe on the Y, the third. So why do I keep, I always have an issue with saying hurt. So why do I keep saying hurt? Uh, let's just spawn an enemy at 15 and four. That's placed in an uh, JSON file. But the problem is that the, if before there was no interface over here. So uh, I had more um, rows on the Y axis and zero zero started here. So I had to adjust the uh, position, the Y position for everything, uh, I had to add uh, 80, 
no 48 pixels to everything and so uh, luckily i already had like a function that trans or that translates converts the y and the x value like okay 14 and 4 they were just multiplied by 16 because it's a 16 by 16 grid um so i'm really glad that i made a function for that i just had to uh, return a different value that also added you know that made that conversion but also added 84 pixels you now 48 pixels to that value um, but that meant that i had to change that for the enemies the items and all the other things that i actually had to load in so it didn't take that much time maybe a couple hours uh let's just say two hours max uh to change those things it it wasn't like a big difficult thing like oh my god i have to change that much but it was just oh uh, this this actually impacted that because another thing that it really impacted was how the level is called um because uh, it didn't align it well anymore and i'm using the move to like the a new tile map is created and it moves to the screen or up and down based on like okay am i going down then it actually moves up there were just small a ton of small little changes but it really impacted like how the uh you know the change of l went um just i had to change some values not a big thing but it was like right that is why you have been looking at the same screens for over a month for six weeks um because you know if i had made it like a bigger level there's no there's no need for that i i'm just building the functionality and uh, you know just trying to make it work and that's the important part that it actually works so the uh the other thing that i um was that the other thing was it, um yeah so that's that's maybe the biggest thing so we do have like an inventory or now the interface at, at the top uh you know so we have space to display our health or other values that are that are really necessary for the game and uh you know uh there are probably pros and cons for having this top bar at the top but i think there are more you know positive sides and more uh, pros to do this than um you know try to force it on uh, on top of the level uh, you know the level layout itself and that would have caused so many issues so i don't know why i was postponing it i i was thinking that it was maybe a little bit more complicated uh you know it was still two hours or so uh, to change everything but uh, i'm glad that, that, that i did because uh, yes now this is set in stone we're never gonna change it again um I think I'm going to stick with the uh, the height though, and of course the width as well. We can't adjust the width. Um, so the the UI it's uh, 48 pixels. Um, that actually uh, means that it's like three tiles uh, in in height. Um, you know, it's. I think the nice thing is that it's a des design constraint right now. It can't be uh you know wider it uh, the width can be adjusted and the height can be adjusted so everything that i want to display is gonna go there if i can't i have to redesign the ui and that's it it's not i like that it's a limitation i love those uh, small limitations so that is the biggest thing that i actually want to wanted to talk about um and another thing that has changed let's just um in the other screens not nothing has really changed but um let's just do this and build it again um let's just kill this enemy yeah here we go so i changed a small thing uh with how the um with the way the interactions actually work oh i only have two minutes oh my god i i think i deserve like an extra five minutes maybe a few more minutes um but this is not uh, i'm i was gonna say this is not gonna take a long time but i could talk maybe two hours uh, <laughs> about uh, the following i'm really 
like last video i was talking about the trigger events like okay if you do this then uh things need to communicate to each other and how this game is built up i was really thinking like okay how am i actually gonna do that and how am i gonna interact with objects like if i pick up this item uh these are just some arrows uh it's just a matter of collision like i touch it yes or no but how do I know that this object is a switch and how do I interact with it? The way it is set up right now is that I do have a very special button. That's the interact button. I know, very complex. Um, but once I press the uh, interact button, it's J. I don't know why. Um, because K is a tag. Um, so I needed an interact button and um, uh, what I am doing <laughs> is that when at the start of a screen, uh, you know, when we go uh, on this, at the start of the layout, it creates all the objects. It creates the, uh, creates the enemies, it creates the switches, it, it creates the, the slidey blocks right now. And um, once that is happening, like uh, during during that event, I am placing some data or adding some data into a JSON file. This is JSON file, the game. Uh, I'm also trying to learn how to use the JSON files. And a JSON file has just a simple value. Uh, the location based on the tell, the X and Y. So uh, in the JSON file, there's a three and six, uh, just as a key. And then it says, hey, there's a switch with the ID number of the switch and the UID of the switch. That is actually the 15 minutes. Uh, you know, I don't mind if the videos are longer, but maybe you do mind. But also, you're here probably because you want to know everything. Everything. So the, the thing is that uh, what is happening is that when i'm here and uh, i'm looking to the left that's the uh, uh, black part on the uh, the sprite when i'm looking to the left and i press the the interact button uh, a function is called and that actually uh, is going to translate or is going to check okay you're looking in that direction what tell is there based on the tell map so it's going to return the value three and then probably an underscore and a six. So it's going to check in a JSON file, the interaction JSON file, if there is an interactable object on the tell. So that kind of means uh, a thing though. That means that it is not possible currently in this game to have multiple interactable objects on the same tell. I kind of like that limitation. It has a downside though, that if an enemy drops an item and I kill another enemy at the exact same spot, what is going to happen to the to, to both of the items? The items aren't necessarily an interactable object right now because if, uh, as I've shown, if you walk on an item, you just pick it up, you know, you just pick it up, like, okay, walk on it, pick it up. But I think what I want to do, and I know it's not Zelda-like, but what I want to do is that you actually have to interact with it so you don't pick it up. And why, you might ask? I don't know. I don't know. In my mind, it's the Zelda like, and I do think that at some point I want to build a more complex inventory where you have a limited amount of space. You might have to sell items to actually make more space or have to store items somewhere else. So if you were able to just pick up every item, like how is that going to work? So you don't, maybe as a player, you don't want to pick up everything and maybe let it lay on the ground or, you know, ignore it. And I kind of like that, uh, that as a player, you need to think about, a little bit more about it it's not just about picking up rupees and the coins go up but more like am i gonna pick this up yes or no that's my thought process right now if it's gonna end up like that i don't know but let's get back to the interaction object because i have two minutes left again maybe let's ignore the time <laughs> it's not gonna work out um 
So what is going to happen if I press the J button, and this is kind of uh, super fancy, it's just going to check if there is an interactable object. Yes, it's going to then call another function uh, because it, know, it knows it's, there's a switch with a UID. It's going to check, okay, what is this switch uh, going to do? Or what it's actually going to do is the, um, so the trigger event, the, the thing that I was talking about previously. It's off right now. If I press it, it's going to trigger that event. And then it's going to communicate to everything that has the trigger uh, or is connected to the trigger. So le let's test it out. Press J. And there we go. There's a the staircase. Uh, I'm going to rebuild it though to showcase it a little bit better. I'm going to kill the enemy again. Um, so let's just press J and the staircase appears. Why do you want it like that? Uh, I just had to test it out. Maybe at some point you do have to push a button to make something appear. Um, this is just a test environment. Like the nice thing or the thing that I like is that I'm able to do it. <laughs> and that's the important part. I'm able to do it. What? And it works. Uh, the, the issue though right now is that I'm not able to enter the staircase. So I'm not going to go, uh, not able to go into whatever lay, lies beyond this staircase. Uh, because, I, you know, there's a trigger on this item, which is a lantern. And if I pick it up, then I can actually go. The lantern is also connected to a trigger because I said that is a trigger event. And I will show in a uh, few seconds like how I did that right now because I actually changed it a little bit. Now we're just in a completely new world, new screen. Things are loaded in. I go back here. The staircase is not, uh, um, oh, uh, is no longer unlocked uh, because the trigger was actually set to a timer and I will switch it back off again. But now we're here. Um, so that's the biggest change, like the interactable objects. Let's just um, let's just quickly show like how I did that. Um, also, I found out how to increase the the font size of the construct um, because well, last time um, I was able to figure out how to increase the font size in construct um, because last time I wasn't able to do that. Uh, because I was pressing control and then the mouse wheel, I was, you know, that, that, that kind of works like that. But I think that might only work in the browser version. And this is the, uh, the standalone version. Um, if you want to know how, just press the, the right mouse on the event sheet, go here, font size, and then you can increase and decrease it or reset it. There's no shortcut. Maybe there's in the menu, but um, I was not able to find it in the menu options though. That is where you change the font size of the text editor. I don't think you can do it over here. Nope. Um, so that's that. What I was going to show is that something has changed though, uh, with how triggers are working because I'm going to show the uh, the trigger data, normally I would have the triggers over here with the idea in the previous video, but I was thinking I'm doing some sort of work that I actually shouldn't be doing and that should be done automatically, like the triggers. So let's just go and check the, the right. Um, what I've done, and uh, if you want to compare this, check the previous video. Uh, what I did is actually make the object data, the object data, the JSON file is like all the uh, special items or objects that need to be created, like items, the, the slide blocks and the, the switch. So let's compare this, the item, because that was actually the trigger that unlocked the staircase. So every object, um, I think so far, every object is going to get this. Um, but this object has a trigger uh, key. And that actually stores some value or has some values. And that is where I say, is this a trigger? Yes or no. And if it is a trigger, once that object is created, it is actually calling a function that adds the trigger to 
the trigger data JSON file. So I no longer have to do that. I add or change the values right from the get go from an object uh, that needs to be spawned. And um, I think this is a better way to approach it because Previously, I had to add it to the trigger data JSON, just a few, just a small key with some values, two, two values, that was it. And I also had to uh, add it to the item itself. So I was thinking this could be in one thing. And uh, you know, what else is, um, it changed, uh, the other thing that has been changed here is the trigger, I don't, I don't think anything else has changed here, to be honest. Um, so there's a trigger event. That's it. Same goes for the switch. Uh, if an object isn't in trigger, I don't even have to add it. Actually, uh, I think I could remove it, uh, you know, so I don't have to, um, you know, copy and paste it in there. Uh, but, you know, if I just want to add a trigger, I just have to copy and paste this into that ne next field. One of the downsides though, by doing this, and what I noticed, this video is gonna be longer, I apologize. The The thing that I noticed is that um, this object data file is for the whole first world. It's for the LO world. Uh, the staircase level is the S world, uh, the S0. Um, and I already see that the JSON file there's not much in here, but it's already gonna get complicated. And I, I, I don't know, like the amount of objects that, that are gonna be in the game and in this world, um, you know, it is divided up on the screen. Like this is just for this first uh, screen. And then um, this is the first screen and then the separate item. So um, it's already, um, I don't wanna say organized, but I, I have a feeling this is gonna bite me in the butt later on. Uh, but so far it is working. Um, what I do like though about this is that uh, I have been thinking about the potential of making a level editor. So that, I, this is not me saying I'm making a level editor. Let, let's just be clear. I'm not gonna build a level editor, but this, makes it possible probably in my mind to make a level editor because uh, that would be very nice because all the levels are, are loaded in with the JSON files and the comma separate files, the CSV files. Um, but I think having the values, everything that's important for that item over here yeah, is, the, is probably the, the way to, to go. Um, so that is that actually. Uh, so the, uh, what else is there to explain about this? Let's just ignore that I said the level editor. Uh, someday I want to build a level editor and it seems like a good opportunity to do so. But so far, I'm, 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 I'm sticking with this. It's already kind of getting out of hand. The, so the resize, uh, I've talked about that, just looking at my notes and the interactions, um, eh, you know, there's not much going on over here. Like I said, this is the function that is, get, uh, that is called, uh, you know, once an object is created, let's just go to the object manager uh, to showcase that. Like it's gonna check if it's a trigger, uh, if it's a trigger, it's gonna do that. And um, then it's just gonna um, add the trigger. So, you know, if you do something with interact with the object, it's it's gonna change that. Um, so that that is what I was explaining that that is something that I don't have to do manually anymore. Um, I don't think there's a con to that, like a downside to actually have, to have done that. Um, the items uh, are not interactable right now, but let's just look at the uh, switch. So once an object is created like the switch, uh, I call another function, just call the uh, add inter 
act object, and then I send the uh, the X and Y and the, the UID. So if I want the items to be interactable, I probably only have to do this, and then uh, you know change some values in there. That means the item is gonna be added to the interactable with the the tell on the X and Y, and from there, uh, let's just look quickly look at the interact manager. You know, here's that function at the interact object. This is this is what ha what is happening. Once we press J, it's just gonna check is there a key with the X and Y value. If there is, interact with that object. And um, based on the values in that interact file, because we do have the ID and the type, based on the type, it's gonna call uh, another function. And um, yeah, th this is a kind of weird one. Uh, I was talk talking about the construct two and the construct three, like the main differences. I don't know how to deal with the function mapping. Uh, if you have a, a tip for that, let me know. Because there's a weird one. Uh, I was used in Construct 2, you just add uh, parameters, you know, just send that along, and then based, you could just call a function based on a string. But now you have to add a function to a map, and then uh, add a string, and then based on that string, a function is called once you call a function based on a string. And the weird thing uh, that I don't understand is that, let's just look at this. This is how you call a function with a string. Uh, you know, this is uh, the, 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 the string that I want to call is in the interact map. That's how I organized it. Then we're going to call the string. So the type of the interactable item. So that could be switch or the slide or maybe an item and an interact. And then the, here is the all part and um, it is working, but I don't know what the intent is behind this because normally you could in the string add the values though that you want to send along like comma separates. It's like, okay, this parameter uh, zero and then one and a two and then just send the data along. There were some cons because you could just send data to something that actually um, they don't want that data, if, if that makes any sense. But now it says forward parameters and uh, I'm just gonna read it up, uh, read it. How long is the recording? 32 uh, minutes. Forward par par parameters, parameter index of the current function call to forward to this function call. Note all parameters are always forwarded if the de default function is called. I forward parameters. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna guess with zero, it's just gonna forward everything, but I don't know what is that happening if maybe I need to like make a project to test this out a little bit more. But I, I what is difficult for me is that uh, <laughs> I don't even where be, know where to begin to explain why it, I'm so used to Construct 2 and like working with those functions. Like I use that a ton and then this seems limited. It I do understand it because it's more um, fail proof. Like it's uh, more difficult to make a an error. As I mentioned, like maybe send like a wrong parameter to maybe a number or a string and then everything is messed up. But what I have to do is to send uh, the data because I could call it over here, but then there are no parameters that I can actually send along with it. So what I'm doing is actually calling a in-between stop. Uh, in my mind, it's just something that in between. I'm gonna send some parameters to that and then call the, the function map or the, the, the string. So that is why I have the interact with object. That is just a general function with the type ID and object ID. And then I'm gonna do this and then 
uh, you know, this is either going to call the interact with switch or interact with slide that also has the type ID and the object UID. It works, but I don't like, or maybe it's kind of nice that there's like this in between. Oh man, I'm, I'm not showing it on the screen. Um, this is what I was talking about. <laughs> the, this is the in between. Um, so this is just the general, like this is, this is what I'm calling first, instead of like do calling it from there, uh, I'm not able to do that, but calling it from there, I have to call this function first because here the, um, here the parameters that I'm sending along, uh, is the X and, uh, or the tell X and Y, but th that is not the info that I want to send along with this function. And I think if I call, you know, this here, I'm going to send the X and Y to tell X and Y, but that, that is not uh, what I want to do. So that is why I call the interact object first with uh, these values and then uh, actually call the, the string with that and then doing the these. Sorry for the short explanation, but I'm explaining it twice right now because I didn't show it. Um, so to me, it's working. Uh, if I'm overthinking this, please let me know because uh, I I don't know. I don't know. I think these are the, the biggest changes right now uh, uh, since the, the last video. The, uh, what I want to do right now is actually figure out like the slidey block. I do have some ideas on how to do that. What I am probably going to do, uh, I could quickly show it. Uh, you can see it on the screen here. For the slide, uh, I have to spawn, like where it spawns, and then uh, if it has a destination for the trigger event, I, I would place it in here. So if you slide it, uh, you know, once, push it, uh, maybe, uh, I could check, like, oh, is this new position where it's on? Is it equal to that? Yes, then. Uh, you know, set the trigger event uh, to true. And then, you know, the objects that are interested in that will listen to that and do a thing. So I've not decided yet. I think uh, I'm just going to go for the easy route right now on how to slide it. Because, you know, in Zelda, you kind of have to lean against the object for a while. And then, uh, you know, after a set period of time, it actually get pushed. So you have to put in some effort i i like that it 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 feels like link is really pushing the block uh but i'm i i think for now for testing uh, it i'm just gonna make it like an interactable object it already is and then based on my position uh, i will push that block in that direction there's some things that i have to check like if i push it um is there an available tell is it not is a tell not uh already occupied by something uh and you know check the collision map um there are some smaller things that i have to do before you push uh, an object uh another thing that i kind of maybe want to do with the slide blocks is uh maybe edit add a at the ability to either reset the block or store the data of where the block actually is. And, uh, you know, um, the, the only thing, the only thing that I would have to do is the spawn X and Y, uh, you know, change those values. And then, you know, once you go back, the block is there again and you can't reset it. That's gonna be tricky uh, because uh, you might create some sort of soft lock for some players, but also sometimes you just have to make some consequences. You know, yeah, there needs to be consequences if you just go around and pushing blocks. Uh, maybe you can't go to a treasure chest anymore, or you didn't solve the puzzle uh, that well. But I have not decided yet. Uh, it would be fun though, so I will probably add that uh, functionality, see how it feels like. 
And the nice thing is, if we want to use it, we can use it. So I'm just exploring like the functionality and uh, you know what it actually entails to build it because that is why I'm prototyping uh, this. Um, so the slider blocks, I have not decided yet about the inventory, what I'm going to do with that. Um, you know, there's a basic inventory. Um, don't, don't know, don't know yet. Um, I think the slide block is a small, is the smallest thing that I could do right now. I do think that at some point, um, on the top of the list is maybe like an anti NPC, like interact with an NPC and load in text. Do have some ideas on like a shop. I have not decided about that specifically, but it would be just be nice to have some text and maybe an NPC, some someone that you could talk to and uh, explore like what I need to build to make that work. Another thing that I do want to focus on. Um, no, I, I think that, that that is actually it. That is actually it. Um, I was kind of maybe all over the place with this video. You know, it is what it is, my man. It is what it is. I'm going to work a little bit more on this. And, uh, you know, once there is another, uh, you know, um, something to talk about. There's always something to talk about. I will make a new video. Uh, this one is shorter though. It's 40 minutes. Let's call it a win. From 15 to 40. 15 is not doable. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, appreciate it a lot. If you do have a question, if you want to know, like, okay, could you actually go into detail about this? I don't mind making a longer video if it's uh, like an hour or two to just explain like how I built something or uh, what the thought process is behind something. Just let me know in the comments. Um, just send the text. Just reply. Reply. And, uh, you know, I'll try my best to answer it in a video or, uh, you know, in the, in the comments themselves. Um, yeah, do let me know. Uh, thanks for watching again. And see you all next time.